So you know why you should get into content. The only thing stopping you is your image. F*** your image. The thing that was holding me back the most from chasing my dream of becoming a full-time YouTuber was the idea that I wasn't confident enough to be in front of the camera and it will be embarrassing to make videos if I don't have the skills to get people to listen to me. I wanna first address why you might be struggling with this construct that you need to be seen as perfect and without flaws. And I also wanna bust a couple myths that circulate around the idea of being a content creator. I want to start on TikTok because I need to build up to YouTube. What? I don't even understand that one. Don't get me wrong, TikTok is great for people that haven't had experience on social media before, but how do you think life was before TikTok? Do you think YouTubers had a stepping stone to get to YouTube or did they just post on YouTube? Yeah, they did, they just posted on YouTube. Listen, if you wanna get good at making videos for the YouTube platform, TikTok is not gonna help you. What will happen is you'll build a following on TikTok and you'll start getting views and then you'll move over to YouTube and think, oh shit, how am I gonna translate this audience? It's very, 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 very difficult to move an audience from a short form platform to a long form platform. So unless you're doing a specific thing on TikTok, that's for TikTok, then I think you should genuinely not even bother. Everybody will judge me. Facts. But who is gonna watch your videos? Who is gonna even be able to judge you? <laughs> your first video is gonna get no views, neither is your second or your third. YouTube is a different ball game. It's not like TikTok. TikTok is the app where you see a lot of people hate it. But for YouTube, you actually have to click it. You have to be interested prior to watching that video. So it's very difficult to get hate on YouTube if you're targeting a specific audience. Some people are just naturally born with confidence. Bro, how does that even make sense? Confidence comes from within. I don't feel like I know enough about what I wanna talk about in my videos. Then why do you wanna talk about that in your videos? Why don't you think of something else? The thing with YouTube is you can either make videos about things that you're good at, or you can document your journey to get good at those things. It's a weird concept, but I'm documenting my journey and becoming a full-time YouTuber and showing you guys what I'm learning on the way. And don't get me wrong, I've had my fair share of social media experience, but realistically, I'm new to YouTube. If you feel like you want to make videos about a specific thing, but you don't know enough about that subject, document your journey to get good at that thing. It's so simple and once you do it, you'll realise nobody gives a shit. Anybody that doesn't want to watch your videos won't watch it and people that do will. So before I help you overcome the mental block that's stopping you from showing your most authentic and confident persona, I want you to know where you could be in the next six months if you were to consistently post YouTube videos. The first month is going to be a bit shaky. This is the month where you're going to be setting the foundations and you're going to be understanding where you fit in into the YouTube space. This is the month where you're going to be trying new things, you're going to be understanding how creative you really are and you're going to be nervous. There's also going to be a lot of trial and error, there's going to be a lot of judgement and you're going to have to understand that this is the YouTube game. The second month is going to be fun and it's going to be creative and this is where you're going to learn more about your audience. Similar to your first month on YouTube, your second month is also going to be you getting to know how to structure your videos for your niche. And you'll also be getting comments from new people that have never seen your content before. So that's going to be crazy. You're going to be getting new video ideas, new titles, new thumbnails. And you're going to understand how to make videos that suit your audience best. And you're going to be feeling no regret. You're going to be feeling like this is the path for you. This is your true calling. In the third month, you'll be breaking barriers that you set for yourself. For example, your sub count. You might say, I'm going to hit 500 subs. And you might hit 1,000. You might say, I'm going to hit 250 subs. And you might hit 300. You'll also be getting more interest from new people, more views. And you'll see that. There's so little risk to the massive reward that you can gain in the future. The fourth month will be the month that dictates whether you love YouTube and want to do it full time or it was just a hobby and you may do it now and then. You'll be meeting new creators, you'll be making friends and you'll start understanding where you really fit in in your niche and in YouTube overall. You'll also have a stronger understanding of the algorithm and what your audience really resonates with in your content. So this means that the fourth month really marks your style and you'll start to realize that YouTube isn't as hard as people make it out to be. And the fifth month, the fifth month is gonna be a grind. There'll be loads of obstacles and there'll most likely be things holding you back. But hopefully by the sixth month, you'd be monetized. And all this means is that you can take the money that you get from AdSense and put it back into the videos that you create. Meaning you can literally just make better videos. You should be getting brand deals, you'll have more creative friends, and you'll also have the proof of concept that what you're doing is really working. So you know why you should get into content. The only thing stopping you is your image. F*** your image. What's image when you can dedicate four to eight hours per week making content and then spend the rest of your 100 hours with the people that you love. The idea that you can build a fan base of people that will tune into your content no matter what it is. What about being responsible for providing value to people across the world, whether that's educating them, entertaining or inspiring just by making impactful content. Listen, what I'm trying to say is that the opportunities are endless and you can't let your own image get in the way of that. Imar Ghazi, do you think he started out perfect? 
No, of course not. You can literally watch his oldest videos and you can see the progression of his content. What about KSI? One of the richest YouTubers on the planet at the moment. He had to build himself up to where he is now and it all started from the first video he created. What about MKBHD? One of the goats of tech YouTube. It's funny to say, but he started out with some of the worst quality videos I've ever seen. And he's a tech channel. Mr. Beast? I mean, to be fair, yeah, he did start out with some crazy ideas, so. I feel like he's an outlier though. He's mentally... I'm just not there. I saw this quote on Instagram and it stuck with me. The more you procrastinate, the longer it takes to fail. Fail fast. There's no quick and easy way to get more confident, but the most effective method for everlasting self-love is to prove that you can break your own mental barriers. Post that shitty first draft video. Go up and speak to that girl that's way out of your league. Do things when you say you're gonna do things and that's the one I struggle with most. And admit to yourself that you're not perfect, but prove to yourself that you'll learn from your failures. And if you wanna learn how to make a great first YouTube video, watch this video next.